Um, I am very humbled to be here because this is a gathering of uh, two types of persons, mainly uh, scholars and heroes. The first thing that I would like to relate to you is the personal experience I had that bonded me in a way that is uh, indelible to this uh, issue of uh, <coughs> uh, converts or, 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 or crypto Jews or Bnei Anusim. In, 19, in the early 90s, in 1990, I believe it was, uh, my wife Einat and I were still a young, relatively young couple. And we went, we went to Spain and Portugal to, for a holiday. It was 1990, the issue of uh, the return of uh, converts of Anusim to Judaism wasn't uh, so uh, uh, in the headlines. There was no institution like this in those times. But I remember that I read some newspaper clip about a place named Belmonte in Portugal. So we, went, we, went, we, went, we made a detour with our car and went to visit that Odd place we heard about it in which there are some persons that claim to be Jewish. And we arrived to Belmonte, and in those times, the, those days, there was no uh, an established synagogue in Belmonte. We found finally someone with a keeper, and uh, he brought us to a uh, you know, a, 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 a house that served a synagogue. And we arrived for Mincha, which is the late afternoon, the afternoon prayer. And they told us, pray with us Mincha, and then uh, wait, we will make a, small, a short recession, and we'll print Mariv, which is the evening uh, prayer. And it was an amazing experience, both Mincha and, both, and Mariv. But I want to speak about the recession the short lapse between those two prayers. You know, Jews, when they pray Mincha and they make a short lapse and then Mariv, they speak politics, Trump, Hillary, uh, the stock market, uh, you know, everyday issues. They did not. They started to sing. And not just any song an Hebrew song, that maybe the Israelis here will recognize it from another political endeavor, but it has nothing to do when, with politics when they sang it. And the thing is, we say it in Hebrew and try to translate it to English, is a verse from, the, from our scriptures. Utsu etza vetufar, davru davar velo yakum, Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. What was the meaning of that song in Belmonte? The meaning was clear. 500 years ago, someone not just someone, the government, the rulers, the church, the church took counsel together, and apparently they succeeded. But no, we in Belmonte think it will come to nothing. We are here again as Jews. The king, the archbishop, spoke a word 500 years ago. But it didn't stand. We are here as proud Jews in Belmont. Wow, what an experience that was. From that day, my wife's heart and mine are committed to this issue of the returning Jews to their heritage and roots. Uh, but, but it's not the end of the story. Because from Belmonte, we drove to another Portuguese city named Tomar. Because we heard that in Tomar, there is a synagogue, a recovered synagogue, 500 years old. 
And there is a person that takes care of that synagogue, and we found it when we got there. And he said, uh, what a pity that you didn't come here last Shabbat, because uh, last Shabbat we brought a minion, a ten persons necessary gathering in order to pray from Lisbon, and we hold the Shabbat uh, prayer for the first time in 500 years in this synagogue, with the Sefer Torah, with the scriptures, etc., etc. And then he took us to another room in that old synagogue converted to a new synagogue and museum. And he showed us pieces of Judaica that were sent by different communities in the world to that uh, new synagogue, renewed synagogue. And there were pieces from Buenos Aires and from New York, and I suppose that also from Miami Beach. And there was a Hanukkah. It was a very simple one, a very modest one, and we read what is written behind it, and it says, to the renewed community of Tomar from the Jewish community of Belmonte. They already started sending gifts and contributions to another, even newer Jewish community. We, we, were, we, we cried, we, we actually cried that day in, in Belmonte and in Tomar. And that's what the reason I am so happy and to, so proud to be here. And I think that what the Natani Academic College is doing is nothing but uh, it's, it's a thing of utmost importance. In spite of my name, Diane, I am not Sephardic. Most Dayans are. Unfortunately, I am Ashkenazi. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, nevertheless, I consider myself uh, as a porteño, as a, as a person that was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I consider myself to be the first Hispanic Consul General of Israel in New York. <laughs> the roots of my family are in the Ukraine. And then they ran, they fled the pogroms of those time of the 20s, in 1920s in Ukraine to the relative safety of Poland, and then to Argentina, and then to Israel. And I always remember something that uh, I heard from my very wise late father. I, my father used to say, my father was born in the Ukraine, they fled to Poland when he was barely a few months old because of the terrible pogroms of that time, and then he was seven years old, they arrived to Argentina. And he, when he was 50, he finally fulfilled his dream, our dream, our Zionist dream of making Aliyah coming to Israel. And I remember that my father used to say, we left Europe with a curse in our lips because of the pogroms, because of the hatred, because of the anti-Semitism. And it was even before the worst of all, the Shoah, the Holocaust. But we left South America <coughs> with a blessing, with a thank you, with gratitude in our lips. South America, Latin America was benevolent to us, was embracing to us. Everything we achieved in our life was due to the hospitality, to the forthcoming way in which Argentina and South America and Latin America in general accepted us and took us. And that's not a personal remark. I think it's a national remark. I think that Latin America has been a savior for Judaism, for Jews. Yes, there were incidents of anti-Semitism. By the way, sporadic, sometimes blown up. We all adapt to Latin America. 
not only for the creation of the State of Israel, that is well known, but for much more than that. The thriving Jewish communities in Latin America are a proof that uh, Jews found in Latin America the exact opposite, the exact opposite of what they found in Europe. In Europe, they found persecution, inquisition, holocaust, pogroms, murder, hatred. In South America, in Latin America, we Jews found embraces, uh, prosperity, liberty, freedom of worship, the exact opposite of what we find in Europe. So yes, we should, we, the Jewish people owes the debt of honor to Latin America. And uh, a last remark. Fortunately, we are witnessing these days, these months, I would even say, it's not these years, this late, late last month, a great renaissance in Israel's relationships with Latin America. An imp a dramatic improvement in our relations with Latin America. In the last uh, months, the two largest countries in South America, Brazil and Argentina, are now much more friendly to Israel than they were a year ago. Other countries, uh, Paraguay, Uruguay, Peru, Colombia, uh, Honduras, whose president uh, studied in Israel uh, and already, I think, visited twice Israel since he came to power, Mexico and others. Unfortunately, there are still four Latin American countries that do not have relations, diplomatic relations with Israel, but we know that uh, what path history goes and that it also will change. We are talking about Venezuela, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and Cuba, but that will change ultimately also. And now a real last word. As I said earlier, uh, Secretary Cisneros spoke eloquently and I already reported to my ministry secretary your warm words um, about uh, the importance of the Latino community in, in this country. And whoever uh, doesn't understand the changing demographics of this country is uh, not doing his job. And in 2060, um, if the Messiah doesn't come until us, we expect him maybe tomorrow he will come, but if he doesn't come until 2060, 2060 will occur in exactly 44 years. And uh, a third of the American electorate will be Latino. Israel will not be able to maintain its alliance with this, with this great country, which is the utmost strategic asset we'd have without support for the, with, with support of the Latino community. That's the reason uh, when I came here, I am not a career diplomat, I'm not going to elaborate on biography, I'm a personal appointment by Prime Minister Netanyahu, and I am a diplomat for exactly five weeks. Uh, um, after a few strategy sessions uh, I conducted in my consulate with my staff, uh, we decided that uh, we will have two top priorities, three top priorities in my tenure of three or four years in New York. And, and uh, you know, New York is actually, in many senses, the U.S. The first of all is the first of all, of course, the Jewish community to. That goes without saying. The second is the millennials, and the third is the Latino community. We'll be, we will be a very aggressive in the good sense of the word in our engagement uh, with the Latino community in New York, and not only in New York. Uh, that everyone knows from day one in my consulate 
this is my top priority. We will, uh, I hope to travel soon also to Puerto Rico, to Somos El Futuro conference and other uh, endeavors. I have already a, a tour with the Bronx, with the President Ruben Diaz of uh, Bronx, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That is our top priority, I believe, as I cannot compete with Secretary Cisneros in the way he explained that. We have common values, we, have, we share common causes, uh, we can contribute to each other, not only we to the Latino community, also that we have a lot to learn from the Latino community for Israel, issues of immigration, issues of uh, 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 adapting to a new language and a new culture and a new environment that Israel excels on that, and other issues that we can learn a lot from the Latinos. So um, my Spanish, at least, after many years I had virtually no opportunity to speak it, but with my mother, because with my mother I keep speaking in the language we spoke when I was three, otherwise it's artificial. Um, I will have, I will polish my Spanish and I hope I will have, may have good opportunities to make use of it for the sake both of Israel and the Latino community in the United States of America. Thank you very much.